Okay, so let's say you really want to go somewhere, but you also really don't want to feel like you're going to throw up before you get there. So if you're dealing with motion sickness issues, in this video, I'm going to help you understand what seems to be the most common cause for motion sickness, but I'm also going to help you understand steps you can take to turn this around. You don't want to miss this. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So let us know in the comments below what type of motion causes the most trouble for you, whether it's a car or a boat or maybe you're just doing jumping jacks. Let us know. That's always great to hear about. So a lot of people feel like this motion sickness issue comes about from a mismatch in signals about movement from different parts of the body. So say you're in the car, maybe you're in the back seat and you're reading your phone, but you're driving. So your eyes are saying, hey, you're kind of sitting still but your balance mechanisms are like, nah, we're going like 60 miles an hour. So a lot of people feel like it's this mismatch that's creating the nausea or the dizziness or the other symptoms that can come along with motion sickness. So what we need to ask is that why do some people deal with this issue and a lot of people can just read a whole novel in the back seat while they're sitting upside down or spinning around in circles and they have no trouble. So what we have found is that this motion sickness issue seems to come about with people that appear to have lower levels of minerals in the system. So the body uses minerals to send signals through. They kind of bounce off of these minerals like an electrical pathway. So the body uses these minerals to send signals from the body to the brain and from the brain back to the body. So if a person doesn't have enough minerals in the system, which is very common to see, then those signals can't travel the way that they should. And maybe this mismatch is coming about from one signal reaching the brain and, and another signal taking longer to get there or not making it at all. So there's just confusion in the body about what's going on that leads to these discomforts. But one way to get an idea of the level of minerals in the system is just to look at your blood pressure. You can take your blood pressure with a blood pressure cuff you pick up at a pharmacy for $30 or $40, and it's best to take that blood pressure at least two hours after a meal, but not fasting first thing in the morning. It should be after a meal. And you just want to relax and take that blood pressure. And if your systolic number, which is that top number, is lower than 112, that's a strong indication that there's probably not enough minerals in the system. Minerals are part of what thicken up the blood and raise our blood pressure. So when we see someone with low blood pressure, it's often telling us that they're not bringing enough minerals into the system, or maybe they're peeing out too many minerals too quickly. In either case, that low blood pressure can give you an indication of, hey, I deal with motion sickness and I have low blood pressure, so all of a sudden this motion sickness could make sense for me. This can also help us understand why antihistamines can often help some people relieve the symptoms of motion sickness. So antihistamines are used for seasonal allergies in most cases, and seasonal allergies usually show up when a person's autonomic nervous system is stuck in what we call the parasympathetic rest and digest state. That's usually where we see people that deal with chronic seasonal allergies. But antihistamines work because they push a person into a more sympathetic fight or flight state. And this sympathetic state, which is a natural state for the body to move into, but when they're pushed far into this state by using these antihistamines, it can constrict that vascular system, which means more pressure is needed to push that blood through the system and it raises the person's blood pressure. Now that blood pressure is a little bit higher, signals can travel a little bit easier, and it seems to relieve those symptoms. So this is great news for you because all you have to do is look at your blood pressure and see is this the issue that's creating this motion sickness for me? And if it is, you can just take steps to raise your mineral levels. If you can raise your mineral levels and bring that blood pressure up to a good reading, then all of a sudden these symptoms may disappear completely for you. Now there's other possible causes for motion sickness, but what's great is it's really simple just to look at your blood pressure. And if your blood pressure is low and you're having these motion sickness issues, then all of a sudden they make sense. And all you need to do is take steps to lift those mineral levels and see does lifting that mineral levels and lifting that blood pressure relieve these symptoms and make them go away altogether. So if you already know your blood pressure is low, jump over now and watch our video on how to boost mineral levels so you can take those steps to lift those minerals and relieve this symptom altogether. I can't wait to hear how it goes for you. 